heat and rare weather events are threatening the global food supply. Incidents like Hurricane Adalia and the wildfires in Hawaii, Canada and Europe are leading the world's scientists to consider new ways to preserve food supplies. One of those options, emergency seed vaults. Joining us now is Stefan Schmitz. He is the executive director of Crop Trust, a nonprofit international organization dedicated to conserving crop diversity. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so there are seed vaults and then there are seed banks. Can you help us understand the difference and how they work to impact the food supply? I mean, there are there are seed banks uh, all around the world. Every every country has at least one such uh, larger seed banks for research for breeding purposes. In the U.S., for example, that is based in Fort Collins in in, in Colorado. Uh, these are the usual seed banks. They are linked to breeding programs to farmers, breeders, and so on. When we talk about a seed vault, and there is one big one in the Arctic north of uh, Norway on the island of Spitsbergen. This is uh, only a security backup where all the other seed banks or gene banks send their duplicates to to make sure that in times of uh, a, a loss due to a fire, due to war, due to natural hazards, uh, they have a security backup w which they can uh, then withdraw and uh, use for continuation of their breeding programs. How critical is all of this to invest in as we feel the effects of extreme weather? Yeah, I mean, we have all to be prepared um, that uh, these extremes becoming the new normal. And in thinking about how best to adapt to this, to find an answer to this, one thing should be clear. We can't rely on just uh, corn, uh, wheat, and, and rice. There are so many uh, crops around the world which are in um, uh, uh, ready for use and housed in such gene banks and seed vaults. For example, millet, sorghum, oats, barley, some of them are well prepared to um, withstand harsher climates, longer droughts, higher temperature, thunderstorms, and so on. Yams, cassava, breadfruit, baobab, fava beans, lentil, cashews, just to mention a few ones, they often have so many advantages or they, they hold the key for a secure um, food supply in the future. And we should try our best to use them to make it available for farmers and for future research. And paint a picture for us about how many seed banks there already are and how many you think we need to keep up with the pace of climate change. Yeah, I mean, there are more than 1,700 seed banks around the world. Around 100 of them we regard as very important, each housing more than 100,000 uh, seed samples, samples of very different kinds of uh, cereals, roots, and fruit. It's not the question of seed. We have enough seed banks around the world. The issue is that many seed banks, in particular in the global south, uh, are lacking uh, proper funding. Um, they are in, in a terrible shape. They need to be improved. They need to be they need, uh, trained uh, stuff and uh, better infrastructure. That is what is needed. We need to improve those gene banks and make sure that what they hold as a global public good, as a heritage of mankind, is securely safe there and at the same time made available um, for use for a better future. Stefan Schmitz, thank you. Thank you very much.